In this new video series, I'll be going through a series of electronics labs in Tinkercad Circuits, a free circuit simulator that runs in your web browser and lets you build circuits in a breadboard view like this, just like you would in a physical lab. Now, while nothing is a replacement for building real physical circuits, I did find that this is very useful for any sort of online learning or if you're doing office hours over Zoom, because it is much easier to screen share and clearly see what's going on in Tinkercad than trying to have students hold a physical breadboard up to a webcam where the resolution and lighting really aren't that good and you generally can't see what they're doing. So again, this is not intended as a replacement for a real benchtop electronics lab, but sometimes it is better than nothing or a good alternative if you need to do something over Zoom. I have found that it can also be helpful to have students prototype things in Tinkercad first before they build on a physical breadboard because it can help catch some common errors and mistakes. For example, if I remove the resistor from the circuit and connect this LED directly to the battery, you will see it gives me a little explosion animation and a warning that there is too much current through the LED. This series will also be intended as somewhat of a companion series to my Intro to Circuit playlist which goes over the theory and math behind a lot of introductory circuits that you would encounter in a high school physics class or introductory college electronics class. But again, these videos are just going through the schematics and equations for each circuit. I am not actually building the circuit in a breadboard view. So when relevant, I will mention or link to the corresponding videos in the intro circuit theory playlist. Conversely, I'm not going to be doing much of the math in these videos. We're just going to be focusing on building the circuits and demonstrating their behavior. So again, if you want the math and the underlying equations, you can go check out this playlist, which I'll link in the description of this one. In this introductory video, we will just get started with the basics of using Tinkercad before we move on to more of the labs in future videos in this playlist. So to get started, you and your students will need Tinkercad accounts that you can create at Tinkercad, tinkercad.com. Now, when you hear the name Tinkercad, you might be thinking of a kid-friendly 3D CAD program, which is what Tinkercad originally was, but the brand has sort of expanded to now include this online circuit and Arduino simulator and something called CodeBlocks, which is a block-based coding environment. So again, normally when people say Tinkercad, the CAD is probably the first thing they think of, but it now includes the circuit simulator. So once you've logged into Tinkercad and you click Create, it will give it the option to create a new 3D design, a new circuit, or a new code blocks program. I should also mention that Tinkercad does have a classrooms feature. So if you are doing something where you would like to be able to manage your students and formally view their assignments because they joined your class, you can sign up as an educator and then send your students a link to join your classroom where you can see a link, a list of your students and view their circuits. So if you want to use it formally and have students submit things for a grade, you can do that. If not, and you just kind of want students to be able to hop onto your office hours if you're teaching a college course and share their screens or something, then you might not want to bother with the classroom feature. So I'm not going to be going through how to use that, but wanted to point out that it is there if you want to check it out. So going back to the main Tinkercad account interface here, I'm going to click the Create button and create a new circuit which gives you a new window with this blank workspace, workspace and list of parts over on the right. It also gives it a silly random name in the top left. So for example, I might call this my first circuit or something like that. And the first thing I would recommend having students do, again, this is before we really get into any of the actual electronics labs, is just getting comfortable with the environment and manipulating parts. So you can click a part over on the right and then click again to place it you can use your mouse wheel to scroll in and out. You can click and drag to pan around. You can also rotate parts if you select them. See, so you have rotate and mirror buttons up here. So pretty standard interface for manipulating things in kind of a 2D environment. The thing that Tinkercad adds, since it is a circuit simulator, is connecting the parts. So for example, the very first thing you might want to have students do is just build a simple closed circuit, say with a resistor, a battery, and an LED. And again, I'm not really in these videos going to be going into the math of oh, how do you choose a current limiting resistor for an LED. That's covered in the circuit theory playlist, which I'll link in the description. But in this video, I'll show you how to connect them in Tinkercad. So once you've added all the parts to a circuit, you can connect them by clicking on one of the terminals 
to start routing a wire. So for example, let's say I'm gonna wire the positive terminal on my battery to the anode or positive side of the LED. I click there and then you can click to create bend points to route the wire and ultimately click where you want to end the wire and then it gives you these little handles you can drag to reshape it. You can also use the drop down menu up here to change the color. So I'm gonna use color coding with red for positive and black for negative. I'm going to connect my resistor in series with my LED. So again, this is assuming students at this point already have some basic idea of concepts like open and closed circuits. And now we're just getting to physically building one, which is what you would do if you sent them off to lab to do this. And we'll talk about using a breadboard in a minute. But again, I'm going to just create a closed circuit with my resistor, battery, and LED. LED being a nice visual indicator that your circuit is working, but it does not run automatically. To run the simulation, you have to click the start simulation over here in the upper right, and you should see the LED light up. So that is your very first simple activity just to get familiar with the interface and make sure everything's working. Again, if I omit the resistor or make the resistor value too small, I can click on it and say if I change it from one kilo ohm down to one ohm and run the simulation again, I'm gonna see my LED blow up. But of course, if you go build circuits in an electronics lab, you are not going to be wiring the terminals of individual components together like this. You are going to be using a solderless breadboard, which Tinkercad thankfully contains. So I'm gonna rotate this here so it's vertical. The really nice thing about Tinkercad is that when you mouse over the breadboard holes, it highlights the other ones that are connected. In my experience teaching an electronics class and developing online educational materials for K through 12 students, learning to use a breadboard is something they really struggle with. It's just not intuitive when they look at it, how things are connected and how you translate a circuit like this, where it is pretty obvious what the path is and how current flows to something in a breadboard. So the first thing I would recommend having students practice as an introductory activity is just taking a simple battery LED and resistor circuit and putting it on a breadboard. So you're going to need to explain how the holes are connected in these sort of half rows. So columns A through E are connected in a row and then columns F through J are connected in a row. But for example, row one is not connected to row two. And then in most breadboards, you have these buses running up and down the sides where on larger breadboards, sometimes the buses are sort of broken in half somewhere in the middle, but Tinkercad kind of defaults to this half size breadboard and it doesn't look like I can actually change the size. I forget if I search for, so if you search for breadboard in the components list up here, there are other sizes, but it defaults to this size here. So you could challenge your students to delete these wires after having built that initial LED circuit and then make it work on the breadboard. So I'm gonna switch this back to a one kilo ohm resistor. And I would say that it is good practice to teach students to use the power buses. So I'm going to wire the positive wire from my battery to the positive power bus, negative wire to the negative bus. And I would emphasize that it is important to use neat wiring and color coding. I meant to make that red there. A lot of times when I see students doing this, for example, if I'm using Tinkercad in lecture, which is something I forgot to mention, this is great for having students bring laptops to class and then you can do live or active learning activities instead of just having the students watch you use it. But when I walk around and ask students to do that, a lot of times I just see this. So the wires default to green and I'll say, okay, connect the battery to your power buses. And I just see them do this and then they don't route the wires and they don't color code them. And then as you add more things to your circuit, that gets messy and eventually you just kind of wind up with this crisscross spider web of green wires everywhere and it gets difficult to debug. So it is good to instill this habit in students early, just like when building a physical circuit where you're going to want to color code your wires and avoid a rat's nest or spaghetti or whatever you wanna call it. Same thing in Tinkercad, you kinda of wanna route your wires nightly sorry, route your wires neatly and use color coding, most traditionally red for positive and black for negative. So I'm gonna connect my battery wires like that to the buses. And then I pretty much have infinite possibilities for how I could connect the LED and the resistor 
in series between the positive and negative buses. So at this point, if you're a student watching this video, I want you to pause and see if you can connect the LED and resistor to form a series circuit on the breadboard such that they light up. Or if you're an instructor watching this, you could ask your students to try it before you show them how to do it yourself. So I'll stop talking for a second to give you a chance to pause. And then hopefully after the pause, if you are joining us again, you have tried to get this working yourself. And for both the instructors and the students, I'll say one of the most common mistakes I see when somebody is first learning to use a breadboard is they will do something like this and then ask, why doesn't my LED light up when I start the simulation? So it looks like I have put my LED and my resistor in series there. They're lined up kind of like they would be if I drew the circuit diagram, which again, we aren't drawing the diagrams here. You can go check out the circuit theory playlist if you want to see that. But you see when I hit start simulation, my LED does not light up. And this happens because I think students conflate the ideas of being geometrically in series or parallel in the schematic with being geometrically in series or parallel on the breadboard. And that is not the same as being electrically in series or parallel. Again, Tinkercad helps us out here by highlighting the holes that are connected. And we see that the row my LED is in here, row eight is not connected to row nine. So even though it looks like the LED is physically or geometrically in series with the resistor, it is not electrically in series. I have an open circuit here and these two leads are not connected. So to actually have a closed circuit, for example, I could move my resistor up. So one leg of the resistor is also in row eight. And if I do that, I would also need to move this jumper wire up. Now, if I hit start simulation, I have a closed path for a current to flow even though it doesn't look like my LED and my resistor are physically in a nice straight line in series like I would draw the circuit diagram anymore. And again, because of all the different ways these holes can be connected, there are effectively infinite ways I could do this. For example, I don't technically need this jumper wire at all. I could delete that and just rotate the resistor 90 degrees. And again, it doesn't really look like the LED and the resistor are physically in series, but if I hit start simulation there, my LED is still gonna light up. I could also rotate the LED. So Tinkercad doesn't really let you expand the legs of the LED, but I could attach little jumper wires to them and turn them gray so it sort of looks like just longer legs and the LED is straddling the gap in the middle of the breadboard. I could then move my resistor over here. So now things sort of are physically in series left to right, and they are also electrically in series. But if I hit start simulation, that's not gonna light up because I do not have the right side power bus connected here. So there's no closed circuit back to the battery. But if I add another jumper wire, connect that power bus to this power bus, again, turn that black for color coding purposes, and start simulation, again, my LED is gonna light up. So again, there are probably, maybe not infinite, but an extremely large number of ways I could wire the LED and the resistor in series to form a closed circuit here. The challenge for your students is to get them to understand that there isn't just one correct way to do it, but there are some common mistakes they may make. Another one I didn't mention is having the LED backwards. So LEDs are polar. They have a positive side and a negative side. If you get the LED backwards, it's not going to light up. Whereas resistors are not polar, so you can flip the resistor around and it's still going to work the same. This would be a good time to mention that Tinkercad does automatically generate a schematic view for you if you click this button up here in the top right. Note that you cannot edit the schematic view, so you can click and try to drag and it just moves the whole image around. You cannot drag things, so it might not organize things intuitively. This isn't really as neat as I would have this if I drew the diagram myself. So sort of limited, you cannot edit the schematic view, but again, if you want your students to start making the connection between the schematic view and the breadboard view, for example, you could go back here and see if I move this resistor like this, and then add some more jumper wires, effectively creating electrically the same circuit where the LED is in series with the resistor. I can switch back and see that Tinkercad did not change the schematic view because electrically that is equivalent. So 
Again, when you cannot build things in schematic view, you can't add things here and have them appear in the breadboard view. That is a good way to help your students go back and forth and make the connection between the circuit on a breadboard and the schematic all in one program. So you should now have the basics of creating and manipulating a circuit in Tinkercad and using a breadboard. I think we will stop there for this video. In the next one, we are going to address using a multimeter, which allows you to measure voltage, current, and resistance. And we will go from there as we start analyzing circuits with resistors, things like Ohm's law for a circuit with a single battery and resistor and more complex resistor networks. Remember to check out the description of this video for other related playlists and stay tuned for the next video in this series. Thank you.